One of the key lessons I learned this year is that people will walk into your life, people will walk out of your life, but neither should change your self-worth. I read an article this week asking, why does life feel so much harder in your 30s? And that life is hard, full stop. Being alive in a mortal body, loving other people in mortal bodies, all the while making our way in a world that requires money to pay bills and so on and so forth, isn't really easy for most. I want to reflect on the year that I've had. It's been an amazing year and an equally horrible one too. But look at how far we've come and just how much life has changed. I haven't achieved the goals I promised myself. I haven't had that big career accomplishment I so longed for. My businesses are all not operating as effectively as they should. A little over a year ago, so much happened in life. I got married to the love of my life. I had a baby. My businesses closed down. My granny retired and I lost friends. The challenging part of this year for me was missing my old life and the friends I used to have. One of the more pleasing moments is friends not acknowledging your birthday, forgetting to wish you, but see them wish and parade everyone else for their birthdays. Seeing your friends hang out and you didn't get the invite. Realizing the people you regard important don't regard you important. In those moments, I had to always take a step back and realize that nobody owes you anything. But this year, God did show up for me. I mended a relationship with one of my closest friends. We sat down and had a heart to heart. We both owned up to our mistakes. I bumped into an old friend from Varsity who welcomed me and my family with open arms. And being able to watch my daughter grow strong and healthy, God showed up. The most challenging part of this year was going through the roommate stage with my partner and learning ways to navigate the post-baby roommate phase with him. In those difficult moments, I've learned that communication is key and to always prioritize quality time because they come first. Four years later, I still feel like I'm too broken to be loved and everyone else is out to get me. My person has worked time and time again to show me that I too deserve to be loved. I too deserve for someone to fight for me and that he won't leave my side. Even in death, he'll be around. I remember the emptiness I felt when I realized my dream of owning a bakery was gone because financially things were not looking good. There were no orders coming in. I lost my passion to create, to cook and bake. This year, I've been guilty of being ungrateful and not seeing how blessed I am. Comparison not only steals your joy, but it also replaces it with negative feelings towards others, yourself and life in general. I've gotten the family I've always wanted, the circle of friends who I can count on in the dark. So why would I not be thankful? I'm so grateful that I have someone who sees my flaws and still chooses to love me daily. One thing I'm most proud of is watching us become parents to an amazing and beautiful daughter. 
promising ourselves to be better than our own parents, being able to be there and watch our daughter grow, seeing her experiencing new things and how her face lights up, noticing how she has an attitude like mommy and her confidence like daddy. Part of my growth for 2024 is to be a better person to my family and friends, is to be a mom who deals with their trauma so that it does not affect my child. I'm wishing myself more happiness and grace to accept that it's okay to start over. Five things I want to do more of in 2024. Be consistent with creating content. Travel more. Cook more and create recipes for Beastly Eats. Start doing pop-ups for my baking business. And most importantly, heal and find my true self. I'm so looking forward to what is in store for next year and I can't wait to share some of these with you.